And welcome in to uh, yet another episode, uh, episode number 10. We are now to uh, double digits and uh, uh, working our way up to almost to a dozen episodes here on uh, Two Guys in Beer Podcast. My name is Andy Beckstrom, joined by Sean Field once again. And uh, Sean, uh, another day, another beer. Another day, another beer. <laughs> uh, looks like another day, another 24 beers as we have this um Advent calendar box of beer in front of us, and we'll be diving into that and each grabbing a specific date out of there and uh, giving that a whirl and seeing how that goes. This one, uh, normally, I think, with you know, it's, it, people may or may not know the advent calendar type of deal. You, you go day by day by day, but for the purposes of this, we're just going to pick a random day because why wouldn't we? You know, we just kind of make our own rules, is kind of <laughs> what we do. So, <laughs> but I, I don't know, I've been looking forward to this one just because of the unknown nature to a certain extent but also the variety potential of this but uh i think that my wife is looking more forward to it because now we don't have this gigantic case of <laughs> beer clogging up the fridge <laughs> yeah, and it does take up some room in the fridge but hey it's well worth it just in case you're wondering we are doing a mob craft is what it is so the uh the style the flavor yet to be determined because as you'll learn, they are kind of all over the board. They do not have a specific style because the style is decided by you, the customer. It's a voting thing. They use that style to be. We'll get more into that. But uh, yeah, so we literally, this could be 24 different beers. I have no idea if they've doubled up, if they have only four kinds of beer. Maybe they're all Coors Light. I really don't know. But that would be a shame. <laughs> that would be a shame. That would be that would be the ultimate. Oh, pumped. We're waiting for Ashton Kutcher oh. to jump out like, I got you. Yeah. Um yeah, that would be uh, that would be something different uh, for sure. But uh, I'm assuming it's going to be 24 different kind of beers. Like the side of the box says limited release beers, barrel aged beers, year round beers, seasonal beers, collaboration beers. There's all sorts of stuff. It's kind of all over the board. We'll, like I said, we'll get more into the uh, the style, but uh, I'm hoping that it's 24 different kinds or at least two different kinds maybe for the ones that we yeah, get. Yeah, so. it should be fun. You were talking about the people submitting the recipes for it is it any one question before you dive into it is it any random person just uploading recipes like you could upload the first time we brewed beer and be like yep. there it is yeah, absolutely yeah yeah it sounds like you can upload pretty much anything that you want if you have a flavor in mind but they do try to be a little bit selective as far as what they something that's viable you know what i mean sure. if somebody comes up with like we'll talk more about a recommendation that was brought up on shark tank uh, was like nice. anchovies and pickles or sardines and chocolate chips or something like that. Yeah, that's you know a mean? bit much for a beer. Exactly. Yeah. And so they try to be a little bit more selective as far as what's a viable option, but they are very open to like, we'll take just about anything and then we'll put these, like I think right now they think they have uh, eight different options on their website that you can vote on. Oh, right. So, so go to what? Mobcraft.com. Put your votes in. The the, the that website uh, that, that you go to, uh, yeah, mobcraftbeer.com. And then you just kind of follow the you know the process through there. There's a tab uh, called crowdsourced beer. And then you can just go to the vote on crowdsourced beer option. So pretty easy to be able to get to. A nice website. Got a little bit of information on there and uh, you know, a lot of information on what they have. They have three pre-orders and then they have like the eight beers you can vote on we'll uh, talk a little bit more about those here in just a bit but uh step number one usually on the podcast is to crack the top and be able to get going but yeah, that's gonna be step number two today because the first one is we have to uh we have numbers one through 24 and now we have to make our decision on what number we're gonna go with so uh i think i know what number you're gonna go with but uh, sean i'll let you uh <laughs> You can explain right. the background of your number. All right. Well, I'm going to go with number two, of course. Uh, that's always been my favorite number my entire life. That's the number I wear playing basketball. It's the number I wear playing beer league softball. That's the number I always wear, period. I'm just number two. There you um, go. And that it is. And I started liking that number because I am a huge NASCAR fan. And my favorite mm -hmm. racer of all time when I was a kid was Rusty Wallace. And that's why I like number two. And, of course, if you don't know, his sponsor was Miller Jenny on Draft when I was a kid. So it See, just kind of correlates with the whole beer, beer podcast. Your beer, it started long, long ago. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to crack into number two and see what we get. So this will be kind of interesting to see kind of what pops out here. As, as we mentioned, we were trying to figure out if it's going to be 24 different kinds or just two different kinds. But, uh, yeah, we've uh, popped the top. And uh, let's see here. Miller, Le no, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> So this will be it'll be interesting not only because it's not like the Hopcraft isn't like other breweries. It's their own, but they have like their own names and their own styles and everything. So it's going to be a whole description. 
So this specific beer that we popped out of number two on the advent calendar is Player Breeze. It's a passion fruit amber ale, 4.7% alcohol by volume. And it's an orange can. It's got some passion fruit looking stuff on there. And there is a QR code to scan for the story. Oh, so if I can get enough good enough internet out here, I'm going to scan it and see if we can get any information on it. And I think I'm going to crack this one up. Take a quick sip while Andy takes off on his number. There we go. My number is going to be a number 11. I don't have a grand story, I guess. I just uh, I acquired that number very long ago, years ago. I think mostly playing softball. Ended up with the number. I think I got it kind of maybe playing basketball initially, like I think my sophomore year or whatever. It's just the jersey that I got. And around that time, I latched uh, mentally onto like Jock Jones and that those type of players. I like Chuck Knobloch growing up, I guess, to a certain extent until he left the Twins and then became a awful Yankee or whatever. But um you know, some of that stuff that uh, kind of got going, and uh, that's kind of where I got my number from. But I've had that number for basically everything that I've done as well. Same as Sean, you know, the uh, beer league softball. I've used it uh, a little bit playing basketball. I've used it playing volleyball now. Usually on the back of a jersey, especially for softball, I have uh, ones is the uh, the nickname that I had kind of gotten because of having 11 all the time. Uh, right up until this season when all of a sudden somebody decided that they uh, weren't sure what ones meant, and they actually thought that it was my last name was Onus is what they thought it was. <laughs> and so it kind of became a little bit of a thing. Everybody started calling me Onus, and I, I was very confused. I was like, what is happening? Why it's – well, they figured out that, that they did. They thought that was my last name, not my actual last name. So they didn't realize it was ones, but uh, – no, that's neither here nor there. That's just you know more of a kind of a funny side note this year that happened. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and grab number eleven. All right, look what do you got popping out of there? And I'll tell you this: uh, play a breeze beer. I don't care for the first initial taste of it. Uh, just to let everybody know, I'm trying to pull up the information by the QR code. You might hear a little interference in the podcast. Now we typically we figured out how to not do it, but I have to. Apparently, I have interference to find this out. So, but the passion, the Playa Breeze is like a passion fruit amber ale. It's got uh, light tropical passion fruit type flavor, is the best I can describe it. Not a fan of it. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm just not a fan of it. I don't think I care for fruity beer too much. Uh, this is one you would, I don't know, take to the beach with you, lay on the beach and rub suntan oil on your fat beer belly and put that paste on your nose and drink one of these. I like it. There we go. <laughs> Sounds like kind of a good afternoon. I might do that next week. <laughs> what do you got over there on that one? What's number 11? So, so I don't have like a, a grand description of the, uh, the beer itself, but this one's a collaboration. I got one that's, uh, they didn't even say on the box that it's, you know, some sweet collaboration. So obviously Mobcraft is the one that makes the beer, puts it together, but it is a honey citrus lager called Walker's walk, which I don't, I mean, it's got a map on it and kind of a dotted line, you know, where you're supposed to follow kind of like a map if you're on like Google Maps or whatever for walking directions. But it's a uh, collaboration between Broken Bat Company or Broken Bat Brewing Co. I guess I'm not 100 percent sure where that one is. I don't uh, I don't know anything about that. That's the trouble about getting the random ones is, you know, we don't have the research ready to go. I have the research on Mobcraft, but not on uh, Broken Bat Brewing Co. But it's also a uh, collab with uh, Indeed Brewing Company from Minneapolis. Oh, wow. So hey, and Indeed's cool. got some pretty darn good beers right here in, in town. So some good options. But, uh, yeah, there's really no um, no information that's out there. It just shows the uh, – Find out more about the uh, the the thing at the website, the uh, mobcraftbeer.com. is kind of really about all it shows on there. But, uh, yeah, Honey Citrus Lager Walker's Walk. So the Player Breeze Passion Fruit Amber Ale that I've been drinking here is actually featured at a Puerto Rican family festival in Milwaukee at September 10th of this year. So that's kind of where it came from. Los Morales Brewery. That is where this this particular beer comes from. Oh, well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Los Morales Brewery stands as a testament to the limitless possibilities that arise from combining tradition, innovation, and cultural influences. I suppose this probably could be a Puerto Rican beer because it's fruity, maybe. I don't know if Puerto kind of Ricans fruity. like a lot of fruit or not, but I suppose. Well, there's a lot of, especially in the Caribbean, the there's, yeah, there's a lot of tropical fruit. Yeah. yeah pineapple, coconut, guava, passion fruit. Mine is very, uh, I mean, it's a little bit of citrus, but it's a, it's very lager, very light, very 
this is a this would be a good mowing the lawn, you know, 112 degree day. Oh, yeah. Or not mowing the lawn, just looking at the lawnmower, not wanting to mow. So what does it taste like? Did you say that yet? Was I not listening? It, it was a, a little bit of citrusy, but it's oh, it's citrusy. a very lager drink, very light. So I wasn't listening. So you were not listening, <laughs> but it's okay. That's <laughs> it. I'm too disgusted with this this Playa Breeze passion fruit. I mean, for those of you that like fruity beers, I'm sure you would enjoy this. I'm just not a fruity beer uh, type of guy. Not your style specifically. No, it's not. I don't even know if I can finish this whole one, but I'll I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, if you want to trade, happens. we can always trade. That's that's an option too, because one and one is two, and two is one and one, so it's kind of like the same. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's so that's the interesting part about having you know like now the twenty four different beers with the advent calendar is kind of trying to go through and like all right, so what is this one going to be? Kind of the randomness that is everything that happens with that. So. So the Morales brothers are the one that developed this beer that I'm drinking here, and they have their brewery. If I'm reading this correctly, it's in Milwaukee. That's where they started it. They decided to use their uh, Puerto Rican influences with their fusion of tropical ingredients and traditional brewing techniques. And they invited their family and friends and beer enthusiasts on this to make this beer and use their Puerto Rican heritage to try to come up with that fruity type Type deal. Uh, one of these guys, uh, Yafit, he's a 10-year Coast Guard veteran. He's a former teacher and a nonprofit director, along with Jimmy, the other brother who helped make this beer that I'm currently drinking. He was an Army veteran and a police officer. They both brought their dedication and service mindset to the brewery. It was kind of a service beer in a way, or at yeah. least the background is kind of a... Yeah, the background of how they kind of started their little brewery and their Puerto Rican heritage to the to the stuff i don't even know what to say (laughs) (laughs) by a breeze passion fruit amber ale los morales brewery so los morales is part of the brewery so is it like a collab then with uh or is mobcraft just the uh, idea behind it i think mobcraft must just be the idea behind it or where it came to fruition 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 there we go I'll get it out here in one of these. Fair enough. I one like of it. these points here. So as long as we're uh, kind of on the uh, the process, and again, if you want to switch, we certainly can. You can uh, get a more citrus lager. Otherwise, if we want to pull a second one, you know, I'm not beyond getting multiple ones out here. <laughs> here give this one a shot. Let me try it here. Other one there. Kind of pass along the table here as we uh, get some additional ones. I'll kind of start kind of going over the. Um, the process here. So the idea of this started in uh, 2011. Uh, that's kind of when it uh, really got going. Founders uh, Henry Schwartz and Andrew Gearsack draft up the idea of having a crowdsourced type of beer so people could basically decide what's being brewed. A lot of times brewers oh. try to much better. Way better. That's <laughs> This is way better. <laughs> that's the way stuff. Better. Huh? All right. So... As a brewer, I mean, you try to, in a way, you want to put your own stamp on what you're doing, but you want to have your own styles. But at the same time, it's still a business. You want to make money. And so you want to try to like, well, I don't really do sours, but I'm going to make a couple because there's 17 people that will come in and buy it and I'll sell it. You know, so I'm willing to dedicate a little bit of tap room space to that, to you got to be able to make the numbers work. You know what I mean? You got to be able to sell the thing. So in theory, you're doing a lot of that, but this is taking crowdsourcing just directly to the people is what it's doing. So the concept of what they do is they take their website. They have it set up, as I mentioned, mobcraftbeer.com. Um, if you want the whole thing, it's a backslash crowdsourced dash beer slash vote dash on dash crowdsourced dash beer. A little bit of a, a word thing. Or just go to mobcraftbeer.com, and then there's literally a link. This is crowdsourced beer and nice. vote on it. So you can just click on that and then just get there. But what they do is they you know solicit ideas, and everybody can put ideas out there, whether you do it on their website, on their social media, send them a letter or something. I don't know, you know what you would ever do. Slide into their DMs. I don't know if that's a thing with breweries. But <laughs> you know, if you're crowdsourcing, you're getting everything. So you uh, send stuff out there. There's a crowdsourcing that they try to be able to get. And then several times throughout the year, they basically gather up, well, here's going to be the handful that we're going to have as options. So uh, like right now, they have eight that are on their website to be able to vote on. And you you can either log in to be able to vote. Uh, it used to be 
where each vote was $25. And essentially what you were doing was pre-buying the beer. You were basically oh. selecting, here's the eight, which one would you buy? Because then that gives them the idea of like, well, somebody would actually buy that. But you could always say, well, I would absolutely buy that and then never buy it. Right. And that's kind of tough to vote, though, too, to be devil's advocate when you can't even try the eight beers first to exactly. see which one should they make. And, and they got fun names, but they do have like a, a explanation of what it is, like a cozy layer stout. The, de- the description here uh, submitted by Jennifer Johnson. Oh, that's um, a good just, lady. There we go. Yeah, she's very nice, kind. Yeah. Just like your favorite cozy sweater or blanket, this stout envelops you in coconut, butterscotch, and chocolate with a hint of graham cracker. Perfect for settling in by a warm fire with friends, inspired by holiday seven-layer bars. As interesting as that is, I don't think I would try that beer. But see, there you go. Now yeah. you have the opportunity to be able to uh, do that or be able to pick something else. Sorry, this Jennifer. entire thing. This entire thing is all a lot, of, a lot of stouts, but I think it's more for like the holiday, sure. you know, likely, yeah. I, you know, it's kind of seasonal to a certain extent, but that's where, so you read that and then you get an idea and now I think you can just vote on it. But before you would actually have to, and that was when they went on um, Shark Tank and I'll get a little bit more into that and how that went. That, that was one of the pushbacks that they got was how do you just not go on there and say, I want sardines and chocolate chips. Sure. Because. That would obviously happen, especially if you had somebody with a major following say, this is what I want to do. And then everybody's like, well, let's do it. But they don't actually ever want to do that. Well, now you're screwed, I guess, in a way of having to make this beer, which ultimately I think that they could be like, no, that's dumb. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure not going to do it. You think they would have like a round table or a board or a, a panel of four people at Mobcraft yeah. that were like, no, this just isn't going to work for us right now. Exactly. And I think that that's probably what they do kind of on the front end now. Because like I said, it used to be, so to be able to like prevent a lot of that was they would charge $25 basically to vote. But your sure. vote wasn't really necessarily a vote. It was a pre-order of one of the things. So if there was eight of them and I'm like, well, I would like this one and I would like that one. You could, in theory, vote twice for 50 bucks, And then down the road, you would get a four pack of 20 ounce pounders of that Whatever option. Whatever the beer was. If it was made. But that's, see, that's the tough part too, if it was made. Because then if you don't have that one made... Then what happens to that? You know, does it just go into your account or something? I, right. There was a lot of questions and how that they've obviously changed that since then. Now you can just vote without that. But I think, again, I think that there's some discretion on the back end of what even makes it to the panel to be voted on rather than just every idea, because I can imagine there'd be millions of ideas that pop out there. Right. Yeah. If it's out for the general public, who knows? New t- who? There's no telling how much many emails they get or messages they get or recipes they get of trying trying to do this. Exactly. Now, I wonder if that's something like Brandon could submit one of his beers and get it in one of these mm-hmm. packs around the country. The next question, of course, how much is one of these Advent calendar 24 packs of beer? See, I would have to uh, double check on that because I want to say it was about 50 bucks. I don't remember oh, yeah. exactly, but I thought that it's what it was. So this particular mix pack we got at a place called the Beer Dabbler Dabbler Depot. Dabbler Depot is what it is. It's a liquor store, I guess, to a certain extent, but like it's not a liquor store that has like stacks of bush light in the corner. It's a liquor store of craft beer, craft cocktails. They have they don't have like Kharkov vodka there. Sure. They have like Tattersall gin and you know a bunch of things like that. So it's on West Seventh in St. Paul. It's a cool place to go. It's not a very huge place, but it's it's a lot of fun. You know, a lot of interesting things you can get there. Stuff you've never heard of. It's a specialty type liquor store. Exactly. Know? And this there's is no one of those things. Light in this place. No, yeah, there, there's <laughs> none of that that's happening there. So this is one of those things that you could get there with that. But otherwise, so what they do is you have the voting. On the initial part. So on their website, what they do now is you have the voting and then it goes to the pre-orders. So basically, if those stack up enough, then they go to the pre-order level where then you can actually order it. And I think that that helps them prevent like, okay, well, if we have no pre-orders, we're going to have Sebastian over here make it in his five gallon bucket that he's still trying to learn how to be a brewer. In the you basement. Know, he's the exactly and because that's where everybody always starts. Yeah, you that's know where I mean? they that's start. Where and yeah. I think that's in a it, soup pot. That's the story of these guys too. They started basically in the basement just doing home brewing and eventually kind of built it into this. The two guys actually said that they, they didn't want to like they're not into like big business. Like that's not the type of people they don't want to be huge. They want to start like a bunch of little businesses. Oh, that's sure. kind of that's kind yeah, of that's you know cool. who they want to yeah. do. So they're more into that. So that's kind of where like some of this came about. But so what happens is like you can 
I believe it's it's a little bit confusing, and I, I will freely admit we I tried to look quite a bit. I think that you can actually get the beer shipped to you, but a lot of what their website says is if you do the pre-orders, it'll send it to your local tap room. Now their local tap room, they have three of them: Milwaukee, Waterford in Wisconsin, and then Woodstock, Illinois. So they have two in Wisconsin and one in Illinois. Yep. And so you basically have to go there. However, they have said that you can have it shipped to you through a uh, website called Bevy, which is B-E-V-V-I. Oh. And so because they had a vendor previously, but then that vendor went out of business and it's illegal to directly ship, which is, it's again, beyond ridiculous. me. Yeah. Somebody, so you basically have to distribute it to somebody to ship it because somebody else has to get a piece of the pie. There's got to be another layer of extra money out there. Bureaucracy somewhere. and taxes and fees, you know. Exactly. So there is a way that when you do the pre-order to be able to get it shipped to you is my understanding. And so that's something you can do on their website as well and be able to get it sent there. Although it will from there, I want to say on there, when you try to click on it, it takes you to a place called Bev, B-E-V-V, and that doesn't exist. There's nowhere there for it. So if you do click on that, it goes nowhere, go to B-E-V-V-I. That'll come up with an actual website and might be able to get it there. Although all I could find on there was like a Irish cream. Which don't get me wrong, I like me some Irish cream, but uh, not what I was going for on that one. So this is a little bit tougher to be able to find. Again, you be able to find some of this stuff at uh, the uh, Dabbler Depot in St. Paul, but otherwise in Wisconsin and Illinois. It sounds like at the time when they did have that vendor that would ship, they were shipping to thirty eight states. Oh wow! So they were distributing it's too bad. They went pretty out of wide. Yeah. So I think that you can still get it at some liquor stores, but Mobcraft is such a I feel like it's now become such a, like, you don't have like a, oh, I like the Mobcraft Blood Orange Ale. You know what I mean? I feel right. like it's now all over the board. So that's one thing that I think is a little bit interesting about that platform is you don't have certain staples. You know what I mean? Like shells, you have the Oktoberfest. You know that that's, they're going to dabble with a bunch of other stuff, but Oktoberfest is going to be their thing. They'll always have it. Yeah. So this is, I don't know if, uh, you know, the Mobcraft has like a specific one like that. You know, the same beers all the time, you know, yeah. exactly. Especially because you've got to rotate it so much with yeah. all of the crowdsourcing, you know, be able to get the ideas. I'm sure if there's some that just are bangers, they probably have those as staples or seasonal staples or something like sure. that. Yeah. So, so, so the, the, the player breeze there, I haven't, you haven't taken a, oh, I have not yet. taken a pull. Yeah. That's true. I, I, I got it handed over. I'm waiting to look at the expression on your face. I know. I'm that. hoping that it's different than the expression <laughs> that was on your face. <laughs> that was a different look. Uh, it is very fruity. <laughs> it's almost almost a little it's, soury. It's something. Yeah. There's there's a little. I mean, it's it's an amber ale, but a passion fruit amber ale. It's pretty passionate. It does, it does have kind of almost a sour type of taste to it, like a sour beer. It's not quite that. I don't know if bitter is the right way, but that like it's not that sour, I guess. But uh, it's, it's definitely it's very fruity. It's very extremely fruity. It's sweet. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's it's a hard one to describe. I don't like it. Yeah, I, do <laughs> I, I don't recommend. I don't it. mind it too bad. I don't mind it too bad. So I can I can go ahead and uh, keep pulling on this one. I can you, keep working on that. That's, pull away, buddy. I'm, pull away. <laughs> I'm good with that. So uh, back to the uh, these two uh, fellows again: Henry Schwartz and Andrew Gearshack. Gearshack, G I E R C Z A K. Gearshack. I don't have him on speed dial, so I smart guys. Unfortunately, yeah, great dudes, but I oh. unfortunately, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologize. But again, they came up with the idea in 2011. They first established it as a option to be able to do something with in 2013. So, a couple obviously, years you got to kind of build it out, yeah. yeah, get things going. You know, just because you got an idea today doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. Trust me, I think we've all been there, especially an idea like this. It, it's quite the big idea. Exactly. So they originally started, I believe. As of yet confirmed, because we don't have the background of the guy specifically, but they were college students that came up with this idea, and their first iteration of it was in Madison. So I would presume UW-Madison, kind of guessing there, kind of assuming, really don't know for sure. But Couldn't be a good assumption. It would be, would be an option. But in 2016, they moved to Milwaukee, so a little bit more of a metro area, a little bit different clientele potentially, more people to vote. I guess, sure. you know, college students, it's beer. I'll just have it. You know, I don't know how much they're getting into the voting part, especially in 2016, maybe more now, but maybe in 2016, maybe a little less. Yeah, but, probably. So uh, voting on the beer uh, again, done. Um, you can do it on social media. You can do it on their website. 
then the winner is announced and they start designing the label, research of the recipe, and some of the ingredients while they're brewing. And while they're doing that, then you can pre-order it. So the current pre-orders that you have right now is the, uh, see if I can pronounce this one right here, Anochester, A-N-O-C-H-E-C-E-R. It is a Mexican hot chocolate inspired stout complete with a light dash of spice and cinnamon, the perfect transition to colder nights. When an abuela's hot chocolate won't suffice, this stout will with a kick of spice. That sounds like uh, a beer that just needs a transition into the garbage. It would possibly. I, um, <laughs> no offense to those guys that made it or whatever. I just do not like cinnamon, especially in beer. It, so it's, it does, it's just not my thing. But, it does make it a little bit different. Uh, the next one that they have uh, on the uh, crowdsourced pre-order right now, matcha ado about nothing. So uh, something with matcha in it. This bright and refreshing IPA is a perfect fusion of vibrant matcha and zesty pineapple that transports you to a tropical sunny paradise. Hmm. So it's got the IPA bit to it, so it's going to have a little bit of fire too. But yeah, that that would be one that I would definitely try. So pineapple IPA, that could be pretty interesting. Absolutely. And then the last one that they have is a barrel berry a Belgian-style mixed culture beer aged in bourbon barrels with blueberries. Sounds good to me. I'd give it a whirl. Yeah. So uh, two out of the three of the pre-order, you know, and, and that's going to happen anytime you go to a brewery. You know, you're going you're gonna to get something you do and something you don't like. But, uh, yeah, so that's how their their bit works. You know, they have, like I said, they have eight that are there. We could go through all of them, but they're all pretty much kind of stout. Some of them are peanut butter stout. Some of them are s'more stout, things like that. That's kind of the eight that they have there, but they have the three that uh, we kind of reviewed there that is their uh, current pre-order. So they're kind of in the process of making that, or they've already started making it. Hmm. So you can be able to get that and get it shipped to you or shipped to the uh, to the brewery. So when it first started, some of the interesting notes that I found out, they weren't sourced initially by like a Kickstarter. A lot of places will try to do sure. that to be able to get going. They actually used a similar v- platform called Craft Fund, which I was kind of interested. I'm like, hmm, I would like to know more. It's a Wisconsin-based crowdfunding platform similar to Kickstarter, but it's based more around breweries or things of that nature. So it's when they first... Term, craft Fund? Exactly. A lot of Wisconsin stuff going on with this company, I've noticed. It's, well, yeah. you know, when you, when you start in Madison and <laughs> end up in Milwaukee, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> It does not come with any cheese, though. I did check. There was no cheese on it. I do have a uh, bunch of cheese that I did get. I went to Burnett Dairy the other day, oh, so I do have nice, cheese whips and nice. you know some sliced cheese. Like I got all sorts of stuff. We can be able to work on that a little bit later. So the crowdfunding platform came up with 52, quote, co-owners, essentially people that kind of chipped in and get like a 1% biz- part of the business. Sure. Maybe they ship them a beer or something. I don't really know how that part works, but they sourced a $75,000 to start. Oh, wow. Nice. So they were able to get, you know, kind of a good start and good kind I of base underneath them. how much it took to get, be one of those 52 1% co-owners. Exactly. 5000 know, 1000 10 it, bucks. I mean, I'd give 10 bucks to oh, say absolutely. I own mob yeah, crap. Why wouldn't I? Yeah. I mean, and I think that I've heard of different places doing where you become like a partial owner. They usually try to like put it out there as like, hey, we're going to have a brewery. Do you want to have free beer for life? Which sounds real great, but really you get to go to the same brewery every single time, especially if they have something maybe you don't like, but maybe you like the dude or the the female or whoever it is that's running this thing. They're like, okay, so to be able to get the free beer, it's a thousand dollars and now you're a partial owner sure. is what it is. And then you just that's your dividends or whatever. As the basic, you know, what I've heard of of like bars that have done that, the basics of that is like it's great to go to that same place for a while but after about a year or so like you're gonna go to like i kind of feel like going to the pub today or i kind of feel like going to pizza hut or you know what i mean you're gonna go try something else or maybe i want to try a different brewery yeah you don't hate it you don't dislike it but maybe i don't need to go there today you know like i i love breweries as much as the next person but i don't know go a couple two three times a month you know so like that's something i think if you're able to get the investment you're willing to maybe eat $3 $3 or $6 for a couple of pints each try. So if you give up a 12 pack a month. Sure. I think the so, difference yeah, so with the mob craft is they have different beer all the time. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're going to the same brewery drinking the same beer because you true. never know what mob craft is going to have. This is true. It's now, a little did, bit more all over the board. They have three tap rooms, you said? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so you can go to any one of the three tap rooms. Well, if you feel like driving the distance to get from Wisconsin to Illinois, 
Right. But because Mobcraft has so many different brews by crowdsourcing the recipes and stuff and people submitting them, it probably wouldn't be as bad because you'd be getting different beer every time unless you want different scenery, I guess. Right. Right. They do have on their on their on their website, they do have a tab listed year round beers. So those must so be the, the staples then maybe. Of yeah. The, the really good so they ones. do have a, a seven that are listed as their year round ones. They have out of office, a refreshing light hopped ale. Squeeze and Juice IPA, Juicy IPA, Bat Shit Crazy, even though it's got like the dollar <laughs> sign and an exclamation point, so it doesn't actually say, you know, that, a coffee brown ale. Um, oh, really? Coffee? It, oh. <laughs> I know. Hey, it, please, it please kinda, keep coffee out of beer. Anybody out there that brews beer, home brew, just <laughs> do not make beer that tastes like coffee. Could you please just not do that? It, don't worry. It's great. It's Ugh. balanced milk sugar sweetness gives way to the robust coffee flavor. So it's got milk sugar sweetness. Oh, that maybe. sounds great. That, yeah, not, yeah. Not on your. Give me a case of that. Pre-ordering that one. That's okay. <laughs> the next one is the the low funk pH. Low funk. So I think it's uh, sounds a, like an '80s rap song. There we go. It's got a kind of a '70s vibe with the uh, that kind of disco light on the uh, the logo that they have on there. It's a sour ale with lactobacillus. Hey, I'll try that. There we go. I'm in. Too legit to wit a wit beer, <laughs> Belgian style. Who, who made that song? Too legit to quit. That was LL Cool J, wasn't it? To, yeah, was that? yeah, I think so. No, no, no. Was it MC Hammer? Oh, it was MC Hammer. You're Hammer right. Time. Dude, 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 it dude. was MC Hammer. Yeah. Vanilla wafer porter, a vanilla porter vanilla swilling ice. with chocolate malt notes. There we go. Rob Van Smooth Winkle. Smooth vanilla. Mobcraft amber. Uh, break it down with this amber ale. Break it down. Boasting a robust copper hue. So, yeah, some good 80s themed beers. Going absolutely. On this list I here. like it. Yeah. I still haven't tried a vanilla flavored beer. I need to find some vanilla flavored beer. We, we so. should get you some vanilla porter or something. Like, hey, if anybody can like recommend it. it, put it in the comments of any type of vanilla beer I should look for. I'm interested in trying a vanilla beer. Absolutely. I think that'd be, uh, that'd be amazing to be able to have something like that. Put that something out on the website or on the, uh, not the website, but the, on the social feeds and, We'll maybe get that on. Have you try a vanilla beer ever? I feel like I have, but I don't remember it. No. So I'll have to uh, try it again. Probably one of the, uh, I'm trying to think of what it was. There was a, not a crowdsourced, but a open source, I guess. So like, here's the basis of the brew, and then you can kind of make your own version of it. And uh, uh, Brandon made one of those, but he made it into like a cookies and cream, black is beautiful porter. My God, it's the best beer that I've ever had in my entire life. All right. And that's hands down. Absolutely hands down. Doesn't even matter. Give me whatever you got. I will try it. That one wins. Hmm. So let me tell you. All right. We, we got to get this guy into doing some stuff. I'm telling you, we got to do that. So yeah. So on the website, they got all the different stuff, you know, the 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 normal ones and the, uh, the crowdsourced ones. So you used to be able to vote for the $25. Now it's just kind of you vote and then there's the pre-order. So I mentioned a couple of times a little bit that... Uh, they went on Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah. They, they they did make an appearance on Shark Tank. I'm curious to know if anybody bought into them. So they when Mark they Cuban? went on there. Mark um, Cuban, you out there, Mark I, Cuban? I haven't. He plays into this. Mm, he definitely plays nice, into this. Nice. So I couldn't find the video. I think that it's probably a licensing thing because it must be on a streaming service or something because oh, sure. everywhere that I Googled, and I don't have like all of the streaming services, so I didn't. Go to sharkdink.com or something like that. So I don't know if it's on abc.com or something, but I couldn't. I looked in multiple different places. I did, I promise I did not half ass this one. I half ass a lot of things, <laughs> but this one I did not. But I couldn't find the actual video of when they were on there, but I found a lot of descriptions of where they were on there. So what they were looking for at the time, when they went in there, they were in two different locations at the time. And they had, I believe, maybe they still do. They don't have it listed on here, but they, they at the time were talking about a location that they were working on in Denver. So they may be in additional locations than what's here, but that's all they have listed is the three locations, sure. the Milwaukee, Waterford, Woodstock, Illinois. But so they go on there and their plan was they wanted to be able to expand their, basically their production facility is the idea of it. So the idea of the mob craft is they could have multiple different locations that had tap rooms and maybe a little bit of storage for some beer, but they would only have one location that had the production facility thus reducing some of the costs it is associated with a lot of times that's the things you have not have now you have to have this massive building all right. this infrastructure all this equipment to be able to make the same beer that you're making a couple hours away so the idea is 
we have one big central location that makes all of the different things. But then we have little satellite offices all over the place that like it's cheaper for me to buy a truck and ship it there over time than it is to buy a whole building and all new equipment and all the different Brew stuff the same there. stuff in multiple locations. Yeah. And so I think that that was kind of what their thought was. And so they went into this and Shark Tank is always mind boggling to me because who comes up with the numbers? Like I never understand that, but maybe that's why I'm not a successful business person and I work <laughs> instead in government. That's probably what it is. But uh, so they go in and they asked for $400,000 for a 16% share of the company. At the time, they were doing enough business that showed $400,000 like that previous year in profit. Wow. So, so they, were, they were asking the so sharks were, for yeah. four hundred grand for 16% of Mobcraft? Yes. That's what they're... Yep. Okay. And so it's a little bit mind-boggling to me. Because, so they're asking for that, even though they're making about that in profit. So they must be putting a lot of that back into infrastructure or right. whatever it may be. Back but they're, into the company. Exactly. So they're looking to basically expand this to become a little bit more of a nationwide type brand. That's what their goal was to be able to do. And, you know, so good idea. And, you know, try to be able to do that. So a little bit of discussion. That was one of the first things that like I was talking about before. Before, it was actually Mark Cuban that said, what if I wanted to do sardines and chocolate chips? And he's got a little bit of a social media following, let me tell you. Just a little. And so yeah. that's where like, that's where the legitimacy of that question comes from. And that's where they said, like, well, right now it's $25 pre-buy to make a vote. That's what your vote is, is you're pre-buying something. And so essentially you, at the time, I believe you had an account and you just pay $25 to vote and then you would vote for something. But Obviously, if it didn't win, you'd still have $25 on an account. Right. You just wouldn't get that beer because it didn't win. But if something else won that you did vote for, you'd be able to get that. So that was kind of their idea to be able to kind of mitigate some of the, like I said. The goofy flavors exactly. or goofy ideas. Yeah, I, yeah. I would like mine to taste like uh, Berber carpet and wall paint. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, as long as there's lead in it, I'm all in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Get me some some good old fashioned lead paint. Yeah. You know that. So that's where they try to you know mitigate some of those things. So that was kind of the idea. As they go around the room, the uh, the different sharks. Kevin O'Leary. He uh, had a little bit of interest. He's the Mr. Uh, the, Perfect. Uh, yes, he's the the bald guy. The, yeah, the Mr. Perfect looking dude. He uh, goes after it a little bit. He's like, all right. So I like the idea, and I think that I'm maybe considering it, but. It costs so much for the infrastructure, like we were just saying about wanting to have those satellite things. Yeah. Why don't you just outsource the actual making of the thing? You guys come up with the recipes and then just give it to somebody else to make it. Thus, you're saving that much money. And now my investment goes to more locations. He wanted to press that way. Well, the owners, uh, Henry, Henry was the one that was on there, Henry Schwartz. I don't know if both of them were on there because, again, I didn't see the video. But the way that it describes online is Henry was the one that was on there. He kind of pushed back on that. He's like, no, I think people want to actually see us make it because it's us that are sourcing it to make right. the thing. Yep. We're creating, not just creating the recipe for somebody else to make. So I kind of get where he's coming from for that. So then it went down to the next person, Lori Greiner. She's in it a lot of different things. She's like, I don't really know much about beer, so I'm out. <laughs> so I didn't take me long. <laughs> well, that was a quick one out of her. Robert Hurjavec. Hervec, yeah, H E R J A V E C. I He's can a Fabio looking guy. He's yeah. got his nice hair combed yep, the, up. The yeah, yeah looking absolutely. Good. Yeah, looking um, good at the end. He is not a beer guy, so he's out. <laughs> what is with these people? <laughs> oh, it gets better. Draymond John. Yeah, I don't like beer at all. I hate beer. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, way to entertain that. Yeah, exactly. So things are going really well at this point. They're not even getting like conversation. Mark Cuban. Now, back after he pushed right. out uh, pushed out his options or whatever, he comes back and he says, uh, you know what? I, I do like me some beer. I do enjoy some beer, but uh, I'm a Bud Light guy, so I'm out. <laughs> Seriously? I know. I was extreme. When I read Bud that, I was Light? like, are you kidding me? What like, do these people drink? I know. Like, do they just drink like water and it's Gatorade? Just, it's amazing to me. I, I thought that he would be a little bit more into the wide variety of the scene instead of just like the... So three of the five don't like beer. Yep. One of them likes Bud Light of all beer. That's got to be the worst light beer in the mm-hmm. history of light beer. In fact, you know, I, well, I would probably I, drink a Bud Light before I drink that Flavor <laughs> Breeze you're drinking. To be honest with you, <laughs> but but come on, three people of those tycoons, business tycoons, don't drink beer. One likes Bud Light. Really? I was I was a little bit surprised. What do they drink on that too? 
Is there some rich stuff that is out there that we don't know about? Maybe they have their own uh, brewery themselves or something. They, huh. they maybe they already work with Mob Craft themselves. Like I'm out because I already have it. Mark Cuban owns the Dallas Mavericks. What does he drink when he's at the game? Soda water? Uh, Bud Light, apparently. Uh, Bud, Bud, Light. Light. <laughs> I, Bud Light, yeah. <laughs> that's about it. Although the way he acts on the sidelines, so oh. I think he has a bunch of them. Yeah, so that's apparently what uh, Mark Cuban said. So then back to Kevin O'Leary. He was still on the outsourcing and not really wanting to uh, build the infrastructure. And uh, he's like, nope, I'm not really going to budge on that. And so I'm out. And so they got declined. They, so they no, got nothing nobody, on Shark Tank. Yep, nobody did it. But that's one of those things where it's, did you really get nothing? Because you're still on Shark Tank and on a nationally broadcast television yeah, thing. NBC, so it sounds yeah. like they did still pretty good from that and have expanded their business a fair amount since yeah, that's then. Pretty so, cool. Yeah. So uh yeah, it, it 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 didn't work out, but it didn't go bad, I guess is <laughs> the way that I'll maybe put that. So yeah, anytime you can get on that show just to even do a pitch, even if they don't buy into any of it, is right. Is gonna do some good for good for your company or your business or your your idea that you have, you know, getting out in front of those millions of people. Oh, hundred percent. If you can see a million if you can have a million people see it, that's not a bad thing. Right. Again, I think we've talked about that before. If you get 1% of that, that's still a pretty that good That would turn. be huge, yeah. <laughs> so. And then even if those only 1% even buy anything, just those other million people might talk about it, mm-hmm. you know, just spreading word of mouth like that. Yeah, exactly. Because if nothing else, it's a great idea, you know what I mean? Because you you could, you know, I mean, yeah, so you're not going to get everybody gets an opportunity, but you can kind of, in a way, like, you can do it a little bit like, uh, you know, like, radio stations do like do you really think they're just pulling one person who wants to hear the most popular song like i want to hear taylor swift no they probably had 47 calls on that they're just using sean from apple valley wants right. to hear taylor swift well then now 93 other people are happy because they got the song that they wanted so they probably there's a little bit of that i'm sure with the crowdsourcing that like well like 12 people submitted like this pineapple upside down something cake real similar to it, or something yeah. For the record, I will never ask for a Taylor Swift song to be played <laughs> in a radio station. I just want to is clear it, that, clear the air on that. Is, it, is this where the uh, the editing, the magic of editing afterwards, yes. starts playing a Taylor Swift <laughs> song underneath? <laughs> well, I think we'd have to get through some licensing stuff there. To- it, that's, that's, that's possible. We'll find the uh, God. Who is it? There's a. There is actually. As now I'm not going to be able to think of it while I'm doing it here, but there was a Taylor Swift song that was uh, redone by a rock band. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So. Let's see, see if I can find it quick or whatever. It was, uh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm failing to remember who it was. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, it was Blank Space was the name of the song. Blank Space Cover. I don't even know if I know I Prevail. You, I think you would know it. Um, but uh, yeah, I Prevail. So it, anyway, so it was a Taylor Swift song remade sure. by a hard rock band that became kind of, kind of a banger. You know, I kind of like it. You know, I mean, I'm more of a hard rock kind of guy, you know, like. Not the Shine Down is hard rock, but like you know, Shine Down, Metallica. Yeah. Like you know, I just went to um, uh, Skillet and uh, Theory, which Skillet was a little bit disappointing. I won't lie. Oh, that's it, a bummer. It was good and it was solid. And watching Jen Ledger do her thing up there, well, let me tell you, she was getting after it. Right she was on not point, messing around. Right on point with that. But there, um, is it John? I'm trying to remember the lead singer's name. He was uh, he had like a cold or something going in. And so his voice was kind of cracking. Oh, sure. So for the first like two, three songs, he actually like after about four songs, like they did little kind of musical interlude where they did some other stuff and whatever. And he was off stage. I think he was like getting water or cough drops or something like that. And he actually came back out and talked about like, it's taken me a couple of songs to really kind of warm up into this. And so now we're ready to get after it. Sure. Which kind of was like, well, why didn't you do that in the locker room? Not locker room, but yeah, you know what pre-game I'm saying. Pre-game, I mean, like yeah, pre-game, it. vocal. You, know, you guys are supposed to be like the vocal exercise, whatever. Like up. you know, take that moment to be able to do this. that. Kind of threw me off a little bit, but because for so the first like the way that I described it to uh, Kyle that I went to the concert with, and then again to Amanda later on was like the first couple of songs. He sounded more like a guy that was doing karaoke to the song. Oh, perfect! And really loved it because he was really into it. But like he'd say something and like yeah, <laughs> and it just sounded more like he was into the band rather than in the band is sure. it was kind of weird but it was still good i mean it was still like you know a lot of bangers and a lot of good songs or whatever and it was fun to be able to you know be a part of that and whatnot but uh theory of a dead man though they uh they wailed pretty good i thought i would knew much more of skillet but i knew just about everything that theory did, theory did yeah so they put on a really good show and they actually did like 
two or three different songs from other bands like during the course of that, just kind of messing around with some other stuff. It's kind of fun. It was good. Good night. And not to mention, you know, the drummer from Theory of the Dead Man for a brief second, he was the drummer. Trent Lagerman, oh, from No that's Ice's right. drummer. That's right. He, for, he did drum for Theory. That. I do forget it. Sometimes I do forget about that. So, yeah, he, he a good dude. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, I don't know if he was there that night. I guess I, I should have maybe reached out to him to see if he was going out of that concert. But he might have been in Florida hanging out with mm-hmm. Vanilla Ice or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, no, it was it was still a good time. I mean, you know, live music is always solid. Yeah, you can't beat live music. It's exactly. just the, the feeling, the energy. It just kind of gets you going, you know, mm-hmm. whether, whether whatever it is, rock, pop, punk, whatever, and just live music in general. Mm-hmm. Your local bar band in town, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it just really gets you going and it's a good atmosphere. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, if you can have that good energy, then you got it. Then, yeah. you know, then it's, then I'm in, you know, it doesn't even have to be like, you know, hard or anything. It'd be kind of slower if you really want to go that direction. But if you have some energy and passion to it, yeah, you, you got, you got people wrapped around you. Like that's for sure. So, but yeah, I mean, that was, that was a good time, you know, for that too. But uh, yeah, so that was a uh, kind of a little tirade on just music <laughs> <laughs> kind of well, went off the board like, on that one, but that's fine. You know what? That's what we're here for. Is this, bring the random is podcast you know, is all about. You never know where it might go. You exactly. know, there could be an episode where we barely talk about beer and it could be something else. You just never know. It's been known to happen. I think there's a couple episodes that are maybe like that a little bit. It's, I think even the, uh, the alien episode probably, uh, Maybe a little bit more. If you haven't already listened to it, check out that uh, episode uh, where we talk about the alien beer. And we talk a lot about whether aliens are real. You'll have to go and check that one out. A lot of other things besides beer on that episode is more about aliens than than beer specifically. So, yeah. So, Mobcraft uh, is our uh, beer of choice today. And it's uh, not really a certain kind. And usually we pick one beer so you can kind of drink along with us. And if you want to drink along with us, you can certainly go get the uh, 24 Days of Beers. Or 24 Days Beers. I think that's what it says. Cheers to 24 Beers. But yeah, it's got all sorts of different kinds of beers in there. I guess later on, maybe I'll pull up on another one or something. I think mostly I just want to get the box out of the refrigerator. <laughs> I don't necessarily am worried about it or whatever, but uh, I think that uh, Amanda's probably... <laughs> yeah, I don't think the wife wants it in there anymore. <laughs> yeah, she's ready for that to be uh, gone out of there, so... Yeah, but it's a yeah, it's kind of interesting uh, idea for that you know the, the crowdsourcing plan. So if you want to know more about uh, that specific one, you can vote even if you want to. Uh, Mobcraftbeer dot com. And let us know in the it. comments below if uh, you do vote. Let us know in any of the comments on any of our social media platforms or anything. We're curious to see uh, what you might vote for. And if you're looking, I want to know specifically. I'd like to know even right now the the Mexican hot chocolate stout. The refreshing IPA or the uh, Belgian style culture beer? Which mm-hmm. one of those three would you maybe vote for? Like maybe even check out those and uh, you know, yeah. If you do pre-order one, I'll tell you what. Even if you do pre-order one, maybe we'll come to an episode with you and we'll try it with you. Oh, perfect! There we go. Or we'll just come and drink it with you. Two guys don't even have beer to do, on uh, the road. <laughs> <laughs> don't even have to even bring the equipment. We'll just yeah. come and uh, come and drink with you. That that's always fun too. So. But yeah, that's uh, kind of the recap of uh, Mobcraft Beer. So I uh, hope you enjoyed all of that throughout the course of uh, this episode. Uh, I like the idea of it. I think that that's it's a kind of a idea. fun idea. You know, it a, doesn't always lend to like that same kind, but it definitely uh, it brings out that opportunity for off the wall. Yeah, it sure does. And I think it allows um, home brews or home people that brew home breweries local breweries, smaller breweries, just to try to get out there a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. they don't have the funding or the research or, well, not necessarily the research, but the resources to get their beer out there. If they submit their recipes to a mob craft and actually kind of get out there and get it mm-hmm. uh, distributed a little bit. Yeah. And that's where you can get even beers, uh, you know, kind of like this one, like you were saying the other, the other brewery and then scan for story for the Playa Breeze. But yeah, you can, you can, get into some of that uh, you can also get into the other one that that we had uh, the uh, lager one uh, from indeed and broken bat brewing co so which is much better much better a little bit different so walkers walk is the, that name of that beer I'm, I'm glad we traded for sure so, so broken bat brewing co out of uh, milwaukee wisconsin on that one too just as a slightly uh momentary background right out of milwaukee manifestation of a lifelong baseball fan so yeah founding in 2017 so a little bit of background on that so 
kind of more information on on that particular one, but uh, that could be another episode in the future too. Yeah, you know, like Indeed's also a good solid one too. But I know that uh, we have a handful of them that we got on our docket coming up. We're going to look at uh, possibly some uh, Christmas beers. Uh, I think uh, seasonally, we're looking at uh, potentially some surly beers coming up. If you have a specific surly one you'd like to you know have us try, definitely send that our way. Otherwise, I do have kind of a mix pack that I'm kind of sitting on right now that. Might be able to try one of those, but if you have one that you'd like us to try, definitely reach out on any of our socials. If you have a, a even just a specific brand, you know, if you want us to try Summit or if you want us to try, we already tried Breckenridge, but you know, if there's a specific one that you know, specific brewery that you really want us to be able to try, definitely reach out. You know, all of our socials, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, X, sorry. I'm yeah, well, whatever. We're going to call it Twitter. Even but, uh, Musk says yeah. Twitter. He's like X, a.k.a. Twitter. Exactly. So uh, any of those, Instagram, we're also on all of the major podcast profiles, you know, primarily throughout their uh, Buzzsprout, and then it kind of goes everywhere, you know, yeah. after that. So we're on all of the different things. So you can find us just about anywhere. So the proverbial like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell your parents. Tell your coworkers. Tell the, uh, the guy at the end of the bar, and they just play the clip for him on his phone so we get the extra <laughs> view on that one. I did that the other day. Like I, I tried to like tell somebody about it, and I'm like, I brought it up on my phone. I'm like, I should bring this up on your phone, and we get an extra subscription. Right. The <laughs> trying to help out the algorithm a little bit. So, yeah, definitely uh, you get the info, information out there. It's a lot of fun to be able to uh, bring you these episodes, and uh, if nothing else, be able to have the beer. You know, I'm probably going to be doing that anyway, but, you know, to be right. able to talk about it a little bit and, you know, be forced to learn a little bit, you know, it's so dark, but I can do it. I'm pushing <laughs> through overcoming those obstacles for the uh, the listening audience. So, yeah, that's our recap of uh, Mobcraft beer. So, hope you enjoyed that uh, that brewery. And, uh, Sean, anything to add? No, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we continue to do this for fun. We got a small little following. We'll do another shout-out to the folks in Granbury, Texas. I notice you guys keep downloading every episode, so we appreciate you downloading. Love it. Thanks a lot, everybody. God bless you all. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.